On my first sailing with Virgin Voyages, all I could think of was, whoa, this is really different than other cruise lines. And it's awesome. But it was immediately followed by, wow, I made a lot of mistakes, specifically 19 mistakes that you should avoid, starting with number 19. As soon as you get on board, book things. And what I'm referring to is not the way we normally book things on cruises. Don't go through the app. Day one, I'm gonna do this and this and this, then day two, this. And Start with your ticketed events. And I'm specifically talking about entertainment and fitness classes. Both are free and included. And so what I mean by that is for your entertainment, you have your dinner bookings, which we'll talk about, and you wanna make sure they don't overlap. And these events are sometimes limited number of people who can come. So sign up for all of those first, then sign up for all your fitness classes next because really awesome ones like the bungee class are only available to six people. And so you wanna get these booked ASAP as soon as you get on board. Don't make the mistake of waiting till later. And if you're new here, yo, I'm Christine Lozada with Where in the World is Seattle? And I make travel videos every week to help you get up, get and go travel. So if you like to travel, consider subscribing. I have been on Virgin Voyages over half a dozen times and I don't want you to make the mistakes that I did. So learn from them and know that there are over 40 YouTube videos and tons of blog posts available for you and a killer deal on your next Virgin Cruise. So make sure you check the description for tons of resources available to you. Let's talk about the next mistake. I thought if I didn't get in, I could never get in. And I'm referring to the entertainment shows and the workouts. And so, like I said, book these as soon as you get on board, but you know, things come up and things change and you might cancel or you might realize, oh, I do want to go to that, but I don't have a booked ticket. You can still go. You can go standby, go 15, 20, 25 minutes early. And there's generally a queue that you can jump in and either wait to see if people are no shows. This is how I've gotten into a lot of the shows or even the workouts or at the manor. If they have a show, you can go upstairs and you can watch the show upstairs without a set ticket. So don't make the mistake of thinking you can't get in. 45 days. The next mistake is not to miss out on booking your dinner reservations 45 days before your sailing. And in my opinion, that seven to 9 p.m. time frame tends to be a lull period on the boat and it's the best time for you to go to dinner. And so booking your dinners in advance is very important. You can do walk-ins, but on our last sailing, we were able to do a walk-in at Gun Bay. That was fantastic. They were able to accommodate us, but we also try to do a walk-in at the wake. And every time, I will be honest, every time I've tried to walk in at the wake, I hear the familiar, thank you, we apologize, but we are fully booked conversation. So I've never been able to walk in at the wake, but most of the restaurants do accommodate walk-ins, but it's best to not make the mistake of missing that 45 day window to book all of your dinner reservations in advance. This next one I feel like was a secret back then and is less of a secret now, but I didn't even know that there was brunch. On my first sailing, I made the mistake of not even doing brunch. And I am specifically talking about Razzle Dazzle and The Wake. These two restaurants offer brunch and I totally missed out on it. So don't be me and don't miss out on it, but do know that you can't sign up for those 45 days in advance. You have to sign up for them once you are on board and that whole as soon as you get on board and start booking things, this is a good time to do that. This next mistake led me to feeling like I needed a vacation after my vacation. You ever felt that way? You get back and you're like, oh my God, I'm so tired and exhausted. I need a vacation after you get back from vacation and you have to like do the Costco run and, and all the errands and we'll do the laundry and clean the house. And blah, blah, blah. I booked too many things. A lot of people think there's not enough stuff to do on the boat. I found that to be exactly the opposite. And my first sailing, I made the mistake of signing up for too many things and was literally like starving, running to the galley, trying to eat something really fast uh, to go in a bento box while running to the next activity and then was late to fill in the blank. With it. it was just too much. I didn't 
leave enough time to just chill. And a lot of people, oh, here's a bonus mistake. A lot of people think that there aren't places on the boat to just chill and relax quietly. They think it's like one big crazy party. But in general, there are just so many beautiful spaces that I never got to enjoy. It wasn't until my sixth sailing that I finally enjoyed hanging out up top on 17 at the perch and hanging out in the lounge chairs and enjoying the view. It wasn't until my third sailing that I realized that the day beds on the dock are all, they're all free and available to you because they're impossible to get by the pool. The triple net on the top deck by the aquatic bar. These are all amazing spaces that I never got to enjoy until recently because I just don't make that mistake of signing up for way too many things. So you need a vacation after your vacation. Ah, oh, I'm out of breath. You get the point. This next mistake gets me a little bit fired up because I thought I was a very savvy traveler. I mean, I have a travel YouTube channel and a travel blog and I talk about travel tips and I did not know that I could get a better deal booking with a travel agent. I really did think that they were completely irrelevant. Here's a perfect example. For the upcoming sailing that I'm on, I tried pricing it out and the best that I could do was $300 in sailor loot. I was like, whoa, boom, four night sailing, 300 bucks. Yo, he was able to price it out lower than what I got it for and with a thousand dollars, thousand dollars in sailor loot. Excuse me? Like, do you know how much Moet and excursions and uh, actually that's another mistake. People don't understand the difference between bar tab and sailor loot. We'll talk about that as a bonus one. Ooh, maybe this is way more than 19. Travel agents, they are not irrelevant. I thought they were to check out the person that I work with. He's one of the top 100 Virgin Voyages travel agents. His info is in the description below, so don't miss that. And by the way, if you're getting some value out of this video, cheers that like button, consider subscribing, and tell me in the comments when you're sailing next, because I recently messaged with somebody who was on the same sailing as me. And also thank you to all the people who said hello to me on my last sailings, uh, thanking me for these videos. It means so much to me. <sighs> okay, let's talk about the next mistake. This next one feels silly, but it's very honest. I made the mistake of thinking that I would feel really old. Um, I thought a lot of people think that this is a boat full of 20 year olds and it's just not, which BTW, uh, I am, I thought I would feel old and it's, it's not a bunch of 20 year olds on the boat. Actually on my last sailing, this is an entire auditorium of people who are losing their shit because a woman just recently turned 90 years old. It was such an amazing celebration. But for me, age ain't nothing but a number. And what's really important is that I think Virgin does a good job of presenting exactly what it offers so that people who will generally think WTF is this will not sail with them in the first place, no matter how old they are. So they in general have the right people on the ship and it just feels like a really awesome, inclusive, come as you are. You don't have to do the weird formal nights that you feel on other cruises where it's like people are like, oh, I just, you know, I'm so formal. I just spent three hours getting ready. Like even for Scarlet Night, I spend like 10 to 15 minutes to get ready and come as you are, whether you're in a red shirt from Walmart or you're in something fabulous and fantastic, whatever works for you, come as you are. But don't feel like it's a bunch of 20 year olds on the boat. I made the mistake of thinking I would feel old and that wasn't the case. Speaking of those red shirts, this next mistake I made on my first sailing is I forgot three things. I didn't pack three important things. <laughs> I didn't pack anything red. So for Scarlet, I didn't pack anything Scarlet. So for Scarlet night, I did not have something red on my first sailing. I also didn't realize there was a pajama party under the stars, an outdoor pajama party. I didn't have a pajama outfit for that. And I also forgot a necessity. I forgot, <laughs> I forgot a razor. And even though I asked me ball if I could not shave my legs for an entire week. Um, anyway, I went and bought a single use razor on board is $16. So don't forget your necessities. Don't forget the correct outfits if you choose to partake and participate in that. And I have a helpful Virgin Voyages pack list that I actually printed out and I use each time I sail with them. Um, so that's available for you for free in the description below, check it out. Ooh, there's also a video about what to pack in case you wanna hear and watch this face talking even more. That's available to you as well in the description below. The next one, I showed up at Bimini at the wrong time. On my first sailing, I was like, oh wow, we're getting to port really early. Like, you know, you're there early, early in the morning. Let's get off the boat and explore. It's hot. 
It's hot in Bimini. And the important part about it is there is a awesome part of the day to be at the beach club. And that's when the DJ starts. So generally the DJ will start somewhere around the 1230 time frame, And then the entire happenings cast, i.e. your cruise directors, entertainment staff will come out about half an hour after the DJ starts. And that is the best and most fun time to be at the beach club and specifically at the pool on the side closest to the DJ. They'll do lots of dancing and just fun games and just all kinds of things to entertain you. And so going to the beach club timed with all of that is really important so that now that I don't make the mistake of going too early, getting tired and then wanting to leave early, I get there around that time. It's enjoyable for those couple hours. I stay for the beach games. The beach games are so much fun. Stay for that. And then, you know, you spend time in the water and then it's time to go back to the boat to rest, take a nap and then get ready for dinner. Mistake? I didn't realize that the arcade was free. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I go, I go to the arcade a lot, uh, especially Dave & Buster's, I love Dave & Buster's, but the arcade is free. So on my first sailing, I made the mistake of not fulfilling my childhood dream of high scoring on the Pac-Man machine. I did that on my second sailing though. And be beating Ninja Turtles, like this is your chance to do that. So don't make the mistake of thinking that the arcade is paid, it's actually free. Don't forget to push this button over here. And the next mistake is skipping karaoke. Well, to be honest, I always skip karaoke. It's not really my thing, but uh, I, I didn't even check out the karaoke space, which I'm glad I did on a future sailing because I learned that it's free and they have lots of rooms and each of them accommodate different numbers of sailors. And you simply go in, sign up on the piece of paper and then go sing your heart out in some of these private rooms where you can uh, really belt it out without anyone to bother you. This next mistake is I got disgustingly sweaty waiting for my pizza specifically late night pizza open from 2 p.m. to 2 a.m. at the pizza place. You will get a buzzer when you receive your pizza and you do not have to wait inside of the pizza place. Take it to On The Rocks for some live music. Take it out to the manor. It reaches all the way to the manor and continuing, continue dancing the night away. Take it to somewhere that's enjoyable. You don't have to wait for your pizza inside of the pizza place. Don't make that mistake because, you know, you have enough going on that late night when you need that pizza. Ooh, these next two are food related. Don't miss out on the secret menus. And I guess it's secret menu and like unknown menu. So the first one is Razzle Dazzle. They, it, on my first sailing, it literally was a secret. I, I didn't know about it. No one told me about it. So I missed out on the secret menu that they have. They recently changed over the Razzle Dazzle menu. So at that time it was like a, it was like a curry. And now it's, um, now it, oh, now it's a burger, like a blue cheese burger. Anyway, don't miss out, ask about the secret menu at Razzle Dazzle. And the second secret unknown menu is at Test Kitchen. Not only do they have the regular menu, they have a vegetarian menu. I am not vegetarian. I loved that menu. And if you are on a longer sailing, they have a second option for a menu, a regular test kitchen menu. So make sure you are understanding all of your options available to you, which actually leads to my next mistake. Don't miss out on the specialty drinks at different places. I didn't realize that, cause you know, sometimes like, especially on Royal Caribbean, it's kind of like the same drink menu everywhere you go. There's like some nuances, but on Virgin, it's very different. And you can get a totally different drinking experience depending on where you are. So even things like the coffee place, the grounds club, they do a special tea cocktail. So they have an espresso martini, super delicious. I love that. Um, at the dock and dock house, they have their specialty drink, which is the sangria. But another thing is even within the restaurants, each of the restaurants has a totally different lineup with things like pink agave, having an amazing selection of tequilas and mezcals um, and wines from South America. Or like we were talking about the test kitchen, don't make this mistake. A lot of people opt out because it's um, it's a lot of, in my opinion, it's a lot of food. They opt out of the wine pairing um, or the cocktail pairing. I did the wine pairing and Meatball did the cocktail pairing at Test Kitchen. That was one of my most favorite experiences. They do a 
very fantastic job with sommelier and drink special special blah, 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 on board to make that experience really nice. So don't miss out on that and don't miss out on seeing all the different drink options if you like that. There's also tons of really cool non-alcoholic concoctions all over the ship, but don't think that it's one menu. It's different everywhere and search out all the different things that might be perfect for you. These next two mistakes are money related. Uh, I made the mistake of not bringing enough gratuity on board. This is one where it's personal for me and it's just a suggestion, but in my opinion, I like to bring extra gratuity to show my appreciation to the staff. The staff on board, the service is excellent. So that's just my opinion, but I bring pr plenty of cash gratuity. If you don't have small bills, you can always bring it to the casino and ask them to exchange it into small bills for you. The other thing is I thought bingo, bingo with the diva was J4F. I thought it was just for fun. They're like, oh, I mean, uh, for us, Carlos the diva was the, the diva on the la our last few sailings. Amazing job singing, dancing, entertaining us. I didn't realize that there was actually a jackpot. Um, and so of the four rounds of bingo with the diva, the final jackpot, the largest one was $2,228.21. I would say hi, Lou. Hello. Hello. One, two, three. Hi. Hi. And Meatball won, he won bingo. It was hilarious. Um, so don't think bingo is J4F. It's not just for fun. Don't make that mistake. And this last one was super funny, especially when I was flying my drone and realizing that, oh wow, this ship looks exactly the same as the other ship. In other words, I have been sailing with Scarlet Lady, had my first sailing with Valiant Lady, and they are the same exact ship. <laughs> There are some nuances and some differences. So join me in this next video. I'm taking you on a full tour of Valiant Lady and also giving you a review of what this was like with Meatball giving his opinion as well. So join me in that next video. But if you got some value out of this, cheers that like button, consider subscribing. Don't forget to tell me when you're sailing in the comments below. Don't miss out on more videos, blog posts, and that deal in the description that's available to you. I'm Christine Lozada, connect with me on social and I'll see ya in the next one or on board Virgin Voyages. Ciao. Wait, I'm editing this and realized I didn't talk about bar tab versus sailor loot. Bar tab can just be used on bar, like drinks. So your, your cocktails, your wine, everything at the bar, your coffee, your specialty drinks, your juices, your uh, juice shots, all of them, all the things. But sailor loot can be used on all of that, plus things like your Wagyu beef at Gun Bay or your seafood tower at the wake, or it can be used on retail, um, your fun bag and hat from Virgin Voyages. It can be used on excursions through Virgin Voyages. It can be used on all the things around the ship. Bar tab is limited to just bar. If you're like, oh, wait, hold on, tell me more. There's a blog post about it, so check it out in the description.